Okay, so in your kit, you will find obviously a hot water bottle. It's a two litre hot water bottle. You will find 500 grams of this beautiful teal, giant unspun acrylic yarn. Um, and you will find some cotton cord, which we're gonna to use to tie around the top of your hot water bottle. Now, if you haven't met this yarn before, uh, it's super soft and fluffy. Um, and it is basically the fiber that is then spun into what I like to call skinny knitting yarn that you would go and buy in the shops to do regular knitting with. But um, essentially, if you see that it pu actually pulls apart in this direction, um, but it's actually quite strong when you pull it like that. So when you make stitches with it, um, it retains its, its shape quite well. Um, because it is unspun, if you cuddle your hot water bottle a lot, it will get bobbly on the surface, but it won't shed bits everywhere. So all you need to do is just snip off the bobbly bits, as you would do with a jumper, really, um, that was starting to go a bit bobbly. So um, we're going to be making stitches using our fingers. So no knitting needles in sight. Um, and we're going to work along the very bottom edge of the hot water bottle first and then we're going to build our stitches up but we're going to be working sort of around the hot water bottle and sort of locking it into the into the cover as we go so we'll start off working separately from the hot water bottle then we'll insert the hot water bottle to where we've got to and then work our way up to the neck so i'm going to pop the hot water bottle to one side for the moment and show you how to begin so i would unravel a little bit of yarn you're going to have to keep unraveling as you go just to have some working yarn available to you and then we're going to start you can just leave a little tail maybe sort of a hand span width like that and then at that point we're going to create what's called a slip knot to get us started so if you curve the yarn over like that and then take the right arm of it, if you like, and just give it a twist. So you end up with you end up with a little loop like that. And then you're going to take the loop and fold it over the tail. Pull up the tail. You'll get your fingers under that tail without letting it disappear through. And then if you pull on the working yarn, so the longer end, which goes to the ball, it should tighten into a knot for you. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time for you. So fold over the working yarn end, you're going to flip it over so that you've got a loop that crosses over like that. And then you pick up the loop and just literally pick it up and fold it over across the tail. So you can see the tail in the hole. Pick up that tail, just pop it up through a little bit so that you can see it come up through. And then grabbing hold of the end so it doesn't disappear and the top with your left hand, just pull on the working yarn until it tightens into a knot. Okay, so you should have a loop at the beginning there that's probably about the height of your index finger okay so that's going to that's our starting stitch now then we're going to be making the stitches with our our finger and thumb doing most of the work basically like a pincer you're going to have your yarn over to the left hand side of you so that the stretching out um, Sorry, the, uh, the working yarn stretched out to the left. And then you're going to take your right finger and thumb, pop them into the loop pointing to the left. And what we're going to do is create a chain of stitches, which is going to be almost like our cast on row. So we're going to pick up the working yarn with our finger and thumb, once we've got our fingers pointing through, pick up that yarn, and we're going to pull it up 
through that first loop and we're going to make sure that that second loop that we pull up through is about the same height as the first okay so we're aiming to keep the loops the same height that will make sure that our stitches are all really even so once it's up once we've pulled it up through like that we're just going to pick it up and just give it a little twist so that it lays flat to the left so that's one and we're going in again so we're going into that same the same stitch we've just pulled through in from the right pointing to the left picking up the working yarn pulling up another loop of a similar height like that so if i turn it to its side you can see the height again and then you're just going to give it a little twist and lay it flat over to the left in the direction of travel if you like that's two we're going in again up twist down three we're going to do five in total okay so we've done one two three the way to count them actually is if you look at these v shapes each v counts as one we're not going to count our knot at the beginning so we've got one two three now we're going to do another one four up twist and finally number five up and twist so if you lay it down it kind of looks a bit like a little plait that you've got a braid now if i show you the reason why we've chosen that number is because if i place the hot water bottle down like that if you exclude number five that's dangling at the end those four stitches cover the width that we need for the hot water bottle okay so let's move on to the next stage so what we're doing we're creating the base so this is where the hot water bottle will stand on top vertically on these this row of stitches here and so what we're going to do is start going around in a circle and we're going to be traveling anti-clockwise okay going round and round and we'll slowly be building up stitches and when we've got probably a couple of inches worth of of stitches we will insert the um, hot water bottle and then we'll have some a bit of structure to work around which will help so to start off then this number five stitch is going to stay where it is just hanging out like that and then if we turn our work around so that it's pointing in the opposite direction we're going to start picking up stitches and having them hang out like number five is over here and we're going to be entering these loops around the edge so if you have a look at these loops on the edge here we're going into them to pick up a stitch so number five is hanging out through this loop so we can't go back into there because it's already that spot's already taken by a stitch if that makes sense so number five is occupying this end loop but we're going to work our way around this top edge so we're moving along one step to the left to the next loop the top loop at the top there so we're going in there so we take our finger and thumb we insert it down into there and at the back behind we're going to just pick up the working yarn and pull up another loop and just let it hang like that okay so it's just pointing upwards and then we can move along to the next one next door to the left that top loop we're just going to go in there pick up the working yarn again and just as we made the chain at the beginning we just lay those stitches flat okay so that's one two and then we'll go to the next one there we go three and then finally we've got one at the end here which is four okay so at the moment we've got one pointing out to the right we've got four along the top okay now we're going to create one pointing out to the left as well where our little tail is so this is a little bit fiddlier 
but essentially you're going to find a little you'll find basically you've got your knot and right next to the knot on the left probably around that area you will find a little hole you can pop in which isn't the same as the opposite of the the stitch that you're you've already come out of um, along this top edge let me start let me explain that again so we've got one two three four this stitch here is coming out of this sort of V shape so we've got this one's coming out of the top loop of the V and in a moment we're going to be making another stitch in the bottom loop of that V but if you have a little hunt around underneath you'll find there's another loop which relates to the knot it's, it's connected to the knot and we're going in there first to pull another loop up through which kind of ends up pointing off the end like that then we're going to turn because we're now going to work along this top edge and we'll find that there are now one two three four stitches that we can work into one two three and four so we're going to go into there and pull up one don't worry about the tail for now because we're going to hide that at the end moving along okay to the next one along oh, sorry i've missed one number two is there And three. I'm just counting the number of stitches along the edge of the hot water bottle, which we know is four. So, and four. Okay, so once you get to that point, you should have, if I hide the tail so it doesn't confuse us, we've basically got our original chain of four plus number five, which was at the end. And then we worked along the top row of the loops of that chain and we put another one, two, three, four loops coming out of that side. Then we created another loop which sticks out the end on this side, which was just we dug around under where the knot is and we found a, a spare loop under there and put an extra stitch through. And then we went along the opposite side of the chain and picked up a stitch through the other loops on the other side okay so we've got four on each side and one on each end so this is the bottom of the hot water bottle so this will the hot water bottle will sit on top like that and these two loops on the side will end up creating stitches that travel up the edges of the hot water bottle and these stitches on either side will travel up each flat side of the hot water bottle okay right so essentially now we just continue so doing exactly what we've done working around in a circle i'm just going to unravel myself a lot more yarn now because we're going to need it so the last stitch that we made was this one this one here we completed the loop so now to create our stitches as we go around, I'm going to keep turning my work clockwise as I make my stitches anti-clockwise, if that makes sense. But we're going to be doing, doing things slightly differently. So now we're going to be working through the other side of um, these loops. We're going to be picking up the yarn from the outside of a loop so if you imagine if you squashed everything up like that we're now going to be going in through that bottom stitch if you can see in there we go in there and pull through a loop okay i'm actually going to put all of the yarn on the right hand side of me because we're going to be going continuing anti-clockwise so as you see if I've pulled that up that loop up 
on the outside we can see that chain effect appearing if i carry on round so i turn my work clockwise because we're going anti-clockwise with our stitches i'm going to lay the yarn in the center like that so it's easy to collect when i go through with my fingers i'm going to the next stitch so the first one on the long line pick up the yarn and pull it through so we've got another loop okay move to the next one pick up the yarn Just keep working your way along, pick up the yarn and pull it up. And if you're finding that when you pull this through, you're actually pulling the previous stitch out of its spot a bit like that, then what you need to focus on when you pull your stitch up is to pull it up, but just use your fingers to just pull it through from the right hand side so that it pulls on the working yarn rather than where it originated in the previous stitch. So as you can see, if I turn it on its side now, we've started to build up the stitches that are going to be going up the flat edge, sorry, the flat side of the hot water bottle. So now we can turn to the end it all looks a little bit strange at the beginning because until we put the hot water bottle in you're kind of working with this strange looking floating piece of knitting which doesn't seem to make a hell of a lot of sense but here's our end one i've laid the yarn behind it across so that i can find it when i put my fingers through i'm going to collect it at the back and pull through that yarn like that so i've got my loop and then we're going to work around this side now so i'll lay my yarn through the middle so you can flatten it all out if it helps to make sense of it all lay the yarn through the middle and then turn your stitches up like that so you can find them along the edge so we've got them all hanging out along the edge we've turned them up finger goes through the first one Pick up your yarn and pull it through. Move to the next one. So you have to make sure you don't skip one. There we go, next one. Pick up your yarn. If it helps to put your fingers in the previous stitch to stop it being pulled through, you can do that too. That's another stitch there. So this is the fiddliest bit because like I said, without the hot water bottle in, inside it, you haven't got anything to lean against. But that's our four along there. And I'm just going to do one in the end as well. So fingers from the outside, pulling the loop up. Right then, so let's take a look at where we've got to. So now we have still got our four stitches along one side and our four stitches on the other side and then we've still got our loops at the end it's just we've just done one more row of them so there's more there's more height to it so now what we're going to do is take our hot water bottle and just pop it in the middle like that so it's sitting in the center with four stitches behind it four stitches on top of it okay and this is going to make life so much easier now as we start completing the hot water bottle. So you can see that's the perfect size. We've just done the one on the end. So we're now going to literally hold everything and just flip the whole thing over like that. And it also helps because having that nice coloured background, whichever colour hot water bottle you ended up with, they're all, all different, which is quite nice actually because they're all really beautifully complementary colours. So lay your yarn across the hot water bottle and then you start working along your, your row of four. So we're going into the first one and pulling up a loop. So this yarn, you might find the occasional little bit of fluffy bit that just comes off. It's not going to damage 
your piece of yarn if you just pull that off it's just part of the manufacturing process I think it ends up with the occasional fluffy bit so straight into the next one like that and they do tend to stay dangling where they are they don't tend to come loose so you can walk away from this halfway through if you want to okay and then we're going to do our end one now i'd suggest doing the end one while it's laying flat like that i wouldn't try and turn it on its edge to do the end one so fingers just have to go in from the outside pick up the yarn pull up your loop and then when you've done the end one flip it over like that unravel yourself a bit more yarn and work your way along ultimately you want to keep going round and round and round until these loops are up here basically so they cover they'll probably depending on the size of your stitches because everyone will make slightly different size stitches but your loops will basically cover the entire water bottle so they'll be hanging like this so that that bit there that you see will be at the top so once you've got to that bit I will resume um, so I'll fast forward the, the next part of the video and then I'll resume when we get to the very top here and explain how we're going to cast off. So just continue working your way around every single stitch, putting a loop through a loop all the way around and keep circling your hot water bottle.
Okay, so um, I've reached the point now where my loops are just about covering the top of the hot water bottle. You'll find that there is actually a bit of stretch in this once you've made it. Can you see the stitches do stretch a bit? So if you're, you know, a centimetre off or something, don't go round and do another loop. Um, I would, because you want to leave a bit of an opening so that you can actually find the, the uh, lid of the hot water bottle to be able to open it and fill it. So... You can stretch it up a weeny bit if you're a little weeny bit short and it doesn't matter if you're a tiny little bit over either so now what we need to do we've obviously got all of these loops hanging and we need to close off this knitting so that it's a nice neat edge at the top so my last loop that i made was the one hanging off the the edge so i'm going to turn over and i've got a tail of of yarn here So what we're going to do is we're going to basically take the next loop along and we're going to pass it through, we're going to feed it as it is through the previous loop. So it's going to just be popped through like that so it comes out the other side and then we're going to pop our fingers in it. Then we're going to take the next loop along as it is like that and we're going to feed it through that loop so we're going to feed it backwards through that loop like that and now you'll see and we'll obviously keep your fingers in the, the loop that you fed backwards you'll see that you've got it's, it's closing the stitch behind it so we'll take the next one along like that and we're just going to feed it inside like that Have our fingers ready there to receive the next one so we'll get the next one along and we're going to just feed it through backwards through the one on the left push the one on the left down over it and then just pop your fingers through the loop once you've collected it on the other side so next loop you feed it through the one on the left collect it and then pull it up so you can see this lovely neat edge it's creating there so we'll just carry on round keep your fingers in it so you don't lose it and next loop gets fed through so we'll pick it up so what i'm doing is i'm i've just got my my fingers ready to collect it on the other side i'll grab hold of it and pull it through like that next one Next one. There we are. So we've been all the way around. And we are at the point now. Yes, we've done every stitch. And we've now got to the point where we were at the tail. Okay. So what you're going to do at this point, you can leave that loop just hanging there like that. And then you're going to basically cut off again it's like a hand span amount of yarn I'm going to snip your remaining yarn off like that I'm going to show you something you can do with that in a moment you're going to feed this end in through that last loop okay now at this point this is where you arrange the stitching around your bottle just to make sure it's been pulled up to cover the whole bottle so just give it a little pull. It's very stretchy, this knitting. So you definitely have enough wiggle room to get it up to the top, okay? And now, if you pull like that, it will tighten a wee bit around the top. Not massively, but it will tighten a little bit. Just the act of closing off these stitches in that way will tighten it around the neck a little bit. And now you've got a couple of options, really. Um, if you are going to just let this hot water bottle live within this cover forever um, and you're not worried about having to ever take it out, then you can take this piece of yarn here that you've pulled through and 
we're going to come back across can you see once it's gone through it it goes underneath these two loops here so we want to make sure that they're not left sort of dangling so we're going to go back across like that and then we're going to create almost like a fake stitch to close it so you're going to can you see we're going underneath the first V that you see when you're looking to the right so I'll just show you that again so we've come through the last loop with our tail and if we just gather that together we're going to travel with the tail back across these two loops taking the end and feeding it literally under see where my finger's gone under the V of that stitch in front like that so we're going to go all the way through poke it through like that so you can see we've just created the lower half of one of these V stitches by going under there and then we're going to take the end and take it back into where the tail originates so we're going to go into there can you see that there's the base of the tail there we're going in there too now I'm going to pull it out just to show you how that looks so you'll see we've created like a fake stitch there that matches all the others so it looks really lovely you get the v-shaped stitches going all the way around the edge now and then we're still left with this tail that we need to deal with now ultimately you're going to need to fasten it but I would suggest that you actually from where it is you tuck it inside and find a little space probably below that fake stitch that you've made and pull it up through so just tuck it underneath from through the top and pull it back out just a stitch lower now you're going to see that there is if you have a little dig around inside hopefully the light will show you you'll find a little horizontal stitch like underneath just choose something that's hidden, like a stitch that's hidden underneath the top layer of pretty stitches. OK, and what you're going to do is split your tail and you're going to pop one end of it underneath that hidden stitch. And you're going to just tie a knot like that. One's enough if you if you're worried you can do too but it's not going to make a difference really and then you're just going to take these ends and literally just bury them inside so that's safe now you can't see the ends they're buried deep inside there we know it's safe it's fastened so it's not going to come unraveled and that's the top bit complete now the last thing we need to do is hide the tail it's a very similar story to the um the top there Although because it started with a knot, we're not going to tie another knot to fasten it. We're literally just going to find a place to bury it deep inside the knitting, basically. And I would suggest you go up this way, up the side. You're just going to poke it in with your finger until it disappears, basically. And there we go. So the last thing to do then is to, if you want to, you don't have to, this is optional, is to tie this around the top. So I literally just, just to give it a bit more definition around the neck. Um, now I've given you quite a long piece of this yarn. So it's up to you if you keep it that long or not. The reason I made it that long was because I thought you might fancy with any remaining yarn that you've got. Um, to make maybe some little giant yarn pom-poms to hang on the end. So um, I'll just very quickly show you how to make those. I'm going to undo this because I'm going to need, I'm going to do a double knot there like that. I'm going to need these lengths to tie my pom-poms. So I'll show you what you need. So if we're going to make little small kind of tangerine sized pom-poms, what you're going to need to do is to cut some chunks of the remaining yarn that you've got. 
so about the width of a tangerine and you'll probably need about eight these are the easiest pom-poms you'll ever make and you should have enough yarn to make a couple of pom-poms obviously you can make them giant pom-poms even more giant pom-poms if you wanted to just just make the chunks a bit a bit wider so how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So with your little chunks like that, you kind of collect them together into a little mountain. <laughs> and then you can take your yarn remaining yarn and you're going to literally tie it around the middle now admittedly you could do this before in fact i will you could do this before you've tied it around here so if you decide to do pom-poms tie it onto your um water bottle at the end but you're going to use the ends of your yarn that I've given you this cord to tie around the middle of the trunks so around the belly if you like of this little mound try and get them organized so that they are in line with each other I'm going to pull nice and tight and do a double knot just to keep them nice and and tight in there like that now you'll see it's it's super fluffy you don't need to do much to kind of fluff the fibers out but once you have you'll find it probably will be a little bit uneven so this is where you just go around with some sharp scissors and give it a haircut so there you have it i've um trimmed mine to the, about the size of a tangerine if you kept trimming you could actually make it into even the size of a golf ball and it would be a lot firmer on the surface, but I quite like these um, pom-poms to be quite fluffy. You've probably got enough yarn to do a couple of those. So you could have one long and one short if you wanted to. Um, so there we go, that's your finished hot water bottle cover. I hope you enjoy giving it a snuggle and do check out um, any of my other kits. They're all very simple. You can start without any previous knitting experience. Um, the cushion kit actually follows a similar um, technique using loops through loops to make a cushion. So that might be a good one to go on to next. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and hopefully see you again soon.